All right, we're going to finish up where we were yesterday with 6.2. Um, go ahead and add mid. Good morning. Hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and finish up where I was at 6.2 yesterday, and then uh, I've got 6.3 printed uh, from that file that I gave y'all. So I don't know how far we're going to be able to get into 6.3, but um, let me see if I can remember. If you go in and if you need to print that exact set, um, it starts off with this page here, um, page uh, 17 through 22, if you print it off from that file. Uh, that's, that's what I'm gonna be doing over the next two days, probably. Uh, we'll be doing completing a square, maybe today, and then uh, part, of, uh, part of tomorrow. Okay, so let's look at 6.2. This is still solving by um, fact quadratics by factoring. And we talked about how to factor something yesterday. We had a trinomial here into two binomials multiplied together. We talked about roots. Uh, Z, they're also called zeros or um, solutions. And uh, you can have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions to a uh, quadratic and in this case right here we're solving by factoring uh, if you'll notice to start off with I don't see anything common between 4 17 and 15 so what I have to do is um, we're just gonna have to well what I like to do is what's called guess and check there's a there's a thousand different ways to solve this stuff but you know I'm just gonna show you you know straight out without any tricks exactly how to uh, exactly how to work this out. It's not that hard if you do it just straight. So um, so we're gonna talk about what if I put um, the, the factors of four here and then the factors of 15 there. Well, you could do two times two and you could do um, three times five, right? So let's try two times two. This is called guess and check, okay? So we're gonna do three times five and two times two. We're gonna see what happens uh, if we can somehow come up with 17. If this doesn't work, then we're, what we're gonna have to do is swap these five, this five and three around. Well, we'll see how things go. I think we should be okay today. But um, now, the first thing is we need to make sure that the three and the five turn out to multiply to be a negative. So that means the signs are gonna be different, all right? So one of them is gonna be a positive and one of them is gonna be a negative. Um, now, <clears throat> notice that this number in the middle is 17. That's a pretty large number, right? Well, don't forget that you still have to multiply three times two to get the inner term and five times two to get the outer term. Well, if I do that, what happens is I get 16 instead of 17. So something's up here, okay? So uh, if you notice how I do this, so I get, this is six X, when I multiply that together, right? And this is uh, 10x. Well, 10 plus 6 does not make 17, so something's wrong with the format here, okay? Um, they wouldn't even add up together to be 17. So let's try another multiple of 4. Let's try 4 times 1 and 1 times 1. Um, uh, and then let's try the, uh, the 3 and the 5 and see what happens here. All right, so we're going to multiply here. we got 3x and we got 20x. Well, 3x and 20x will make 17, but you have to subtract them. And in order to get negative 17 uh, out of 20x and 3x, you would have to make the 20 the negative, right? So that means four times negative five should be what we do there. And then uh, three times one, that would be positive. And if you'll notice, it looks to me like we got uh, what we need here because the signs right here are supposed to be different. And, uh, and this is the way I did it when I was in high school. Uh, I mean, there's, a, there's thousands of different neat little uh, nice ways to figure this stuff out, but this is called guess and check, all right? Uh, in other words, it's just brute force, what is it? You know, if, let's try this, if it doesn't work, um, then try something else, you know what I mean? So, um, this is what we need to have. So what we have is two binomials multiplied together to make zero. We need to find the solutions to this, this uh, 
we're solving by factoring, and that's what we just did. And now we're going to um, set 4x plus 3 equal to 0 because of the 0 product property. And then we're also going to set 1x minus 5 equal to 0 because of the 0 product property. And then you subtract, uh, you know, you do the normal algebra stuff here. So x is going to be equal to negative 3 over 4. So that's your first solution. Um, and I can prove this to you with the graph in just a minute, just to make sure that you understand how this looks graphically. All right, and uh, x equals five. So the two solutions would be, uh, I do a little bracket like that, and it will do negative three over four, comma five, done. These are called the solutions, or the roots, or the zeros, or another plate, and otherwise, the uh, the place where the X crosses the, uh, it would look like this because A is positive and you'd have a negative zero uh, solution and a positive solution. I want to prove it to you by showing you on the graph real quick. Um, just to make sure that you know uh, that I'm right and I know that I'm right. All right, so let's say second mode clear every time you get this calculator turned on. All right, we're going to type in uh, y equals. I'm going to delete off my graph from yesterday. All right, we're going to do 4x squared minus 17x, and then minus 15, and then we hit graph, and we should see, uh, yep, it crosses right here, uh, right just before 1, and then over here at 5. So it's a, uh, well, now I'll prove that to you even further by going to second table. And if you'll look uh, down here where the zeros are, the solutions. So we said, um, <laughs> now so notice that in between negative one and zero, we, had, we changed from positive to negative. That means it crosses over that x-axis at that point, okay? And then if we go over here to that other number five, you can see that it's zero also. So it worked out. So we, we solved it and we figured it out by doing a guess and check factoring okay so now let me back this up let's go to the next one uh, now the next one's a little bit different because before you even start I can tell already that we're gonna have to factor out a common term because if you'll notice 6 26 and 8 are all even right well uh, if that's the case um, we need to divide every term by 2 okay so what would happen here is we got 3x squared, 13x, and negative 4. Now, if you'll notice, this does not look like a trinomial yet. We can make it look like a trinomial. All we have to do is add 4 to both sides. And we, can, we have now what looks like the, uh, the, the one we had, you know, the, the way it was set up earlier. Because if you got 4 minus 4, that should equal 0, right? And then uh, now all we have to do is we could do the guess and check thing. In this case, it's probably be a lot easier because there's only one way to, to get the factors of three. That would be 1x and 3x, right? And then four, you can get it a couple of different ways. You can do two times two or you can do four times one. Uh, let's try two times two to start off with and see what happens. Now, I'm trying to get 13, so what I'm going to do uh, what's two times three? Six. And two times one is two. All right, so that doesn't make uh, 13. So we need to figure out another way to do this. So instead of one uh, x at two, three x two, we can do one x. Um, now we gotta be smart about this because we gotta put four and one here. All right, I wanna cross this out. We don't need that anymore. Now, um, we need four and one for the last two terms. And so if you put the four here, that's gonna make 12, right? And all we need is one more to make 13. So let's put four here and one here. That's 12X and that's one X. So if we add those together, we get 13. And if you'll notice, this uh, sign right here uh, is going to tell me that we have the same, uh, same sign for both the, um, the binomials here. So we're going to put a plus on both of those. All right. 
and then we set it equal to zero like we always do and then we'll do we'll uh, use zero product property to figure this out so we're going to set one um, x plus four equal to zero and then we're going to set three x plus one equal to zero well if you do the math on this I can I mean I can I can show you the steps but uh, like I showed y'all in uh, algebra two, there is a faster way to do this. When you have this set up, all you have to do is take the opposite of that sign and put four over one, all right? Negative four over one. So the answer is gonna be negative one fourth for that when you work that out. And watch this, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna say that's the opposite of this sign and I'm gonna put one over three, all right? So the answer is negative one over three. It's just a fast way to, to solve these really quickly. So now you see we have the solutions to the problem. Now I can prove it to you by graphing this, but I don't think it's all necessary. But what's, uh, what would happen is you would have a, um, just a little quick, you would have a very skinny graph that looks like that, right? All right, I'm gonna pause real quick. I've got, uh, no, I'm not going to pause. I'm good. Okay. I thought my animal was, my dog was uh, barking. <clears throat> okay. So we should look like that. Uh, now we've got our solutions. What is the, Mr. King, what is the answer to this uh, question? That's a lot of stuff and it's all jumbled up and mixed up. This is the answer right here. Okay. In other words, these are the two uh, values of X that would make these this equal. So if I put negative one fourth here and negative one fourth here, I would find out that it would turn out to be negative eight. If I put negative one third in this little section squared it multiplied by six, and then negative one third here times 26, I would multiply, add all that together to get negative eight again, okay? So that's what happens. All right, so um, now we're gonna go down to the next one. Solve by factoring, same old, same old deal. If you'll notice, I've got one, two, three terms that are multiples of three. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide by three everywhere, even the zero. You don't have to, but I mean, I'm just showing you that you, you would need to multiply, divide by three across the board. So we have x squared minus two x minus three equals zero. So now we have this set up and it's very straightforward, very easy. Um, so we have one X and one X. And now there's only one way to do three. So we have three times one. Now we need to be smart about this because we're trying to get negative two in the middle. So that means we have a three X here and a one X here. How am I gonna get negative two? Well, that means I'm gonna to have to put a negative in front of that three X. All right, so when you add these together, you get negative two X. So that means I'm gonna to have to have a negative three times one X right there. You see that? And then one times one, is one. All right, so we had we found our solution by guess and check very quickly here. Now we're going to go over here and set by zero product property. This should be zero, and then uh, and then that should be zero. Okay, and so now we're going to remember how we did that fast a while ago. So we go uh, we take the opposite of this symbol and put three over one. So x is going to be positive three. Right. All right. Look at this. So we've got negative, or would be a, a, min, a negative one over one. So the answer here would be negative one. So my final solution set would be negative one comma three, done. All right, so that's how, that's how you can do it really fast if you, if you know what you're doing and um, you can kind of see what's coming before you get there, it, you know, it's always, if you can always run a lot faster if you're sure about what's coming up on you. If you're not sure if it's dark and you're afraid there's holes, then you might be scared to run, run too fast with some of this stuff, right? So you don't want, you want to be able to see what's happening. All right, so let's move back. And uh, I think we're pretty much through. Now with 6.2, um, I'm gonna come back probably, I don't know, Monday or so and sometime next week, and we're going to uh, review. And then we're probably gonna use this little homework section as review. Um, I may do the evens like I always do uh, as review. 
So one whole day will be dedicated to just reviewing the topics that we've covered, okay? And so that is solving by factoring. Now there's another way to do it too, okay? Um, sometimes it's faster to do things by completing the square. And we'll talk about what that means in just a second. Um, you're gonna have a situation like this down here at the bottom that kind of helps you understand what's going on. Um, and anyway, so in this situation right here, if I were to solve this equation right here, what I would do is I would square root both sides, right? So you would, uh, you would square root the x squared and you would square root the 64 and oh yeah, don't forget to put the plus or minus symbol. Uh, so that means that it's plus or minus eight, right? So in other words, the solution to that would be eight and negative eight, right? And so we've got, uh, let's go back and read this and just kind of talk about what, what's happening here. Why would we need completing the square, all right? Because some, sometimes the numbers don't work out right. Sometimes the numbers uh, need um, a little bit of TLC to make the, um, make the uh, solution happen. So it says, we discovered in section 6.1 that it is straightforward to solve by taking a square root of both sides of the quadratic equation. That's what I just did here, right? Uh, when the term with the variable is a perfect square. So that was super easy. So we could also do it here. So we've got um, square root of both sides on here. All right, square root of 64, plus or minus there. Um, and within when this, is worked out this the square and the square root cancel out and they go away and then we have plus or minus eight well uh now we need to add one to both sides okay so this looks crazy right so we have one plus or minus eight so what does that mean that means we have uh, x could be one plus eight or or and how about that and x could be one minus eight so that's what that means, the plus or minus thing. So it could be plus and minus. So the answer would be, solution would be nine comma negative seven. You see that? So eight plus one is nine and one minus eight is negative seven. So these would be the solutions to that. And what I did is I square rooted both sides, right? And in this case right here, you would divide both sides by two because we have a common factor first before we start. And so we got um, x plus four squared, and then the 128 divided by two, that would be 64 again, just like we had a second ago. And then you'd follow out the whole thing. So let's just do that really quickly. All right, so we got plus or minus in front of that symbol there. We've got the square root symbol here. This cancels out that square. And then we have plus or minus eight. So it's the same situation that we had a minute ago. So x equals negative four plus or minus eight. So the solution would be uh, eight, well, let's see, negative four plus eight, that's four. And then negative four minus eight, that's negative 12. So my final solution would be these two numbers right here, All right? Um, and if I were to graph it, it would be a positive or, or an upward uh, U shape going through four and negative 12. So you can visualize the graph already uh, but because uh, you'd have negative 12 over here and four over here, that would be my roots or my solutions, right? Now, I don't, you wouldn't know exactly at this point because it's not in vertex form where the vertex would be, but you know, you could pretty much know where the, uh, you could find where the uh, axis of symmetry was at least, all right? So now let's go over here and uh, let's consider the equation x squared plus 4x plus 2. So this is not going to be pretty. This is not going to be neat, all right? So we've got to do something to this. Uh, solving this by guess and check would not work. Um, there's no way you could do this to make, uh, make the center term add up to be 4x. So something's got something's to change here, all right? Is there a way we can re represent the left side of the equation as a perfect square? Um, and that's what's going to happen here in just a second. Let's, let's 
we'll take it slow here. We know that geometrically x squared is a perfect square. So like what they mean by that is we have an x by x, x squared, right? Remember the number 64? 64 is eight times eight. Well, that's, a per that's why it's called a perfect square because the length and the width or the base and the height would be eight by eight. So they're trying to take a rectangular shape, okay? I'll explain that in a minute. And um, figure out how to make it a square so that we can easily square root and get the answer just like we did here. This is kind of what we're shooting for, all right? Um, so now let's come down here and look at, uh, draw a square with a side length of x. Well, we did that, okay? That's, that's this right here, okay? Now, we're gonna draw the geometric representation of x squared plus four x, okay? Now, if you look um, really close at this, you can see how I've got an x squared right here. So that they're just basically uh, putting uh, shapes together, okay? So I'm gonna put x squared there. So we've, we're taken care of here, and going back to this, we're taken care of here, all right? So now they want us to uh, put 4x to that. Well, what, is, what would that look like? Well, 1x, like this, would be basically a rectangular shape, which would be x long here and one long there. So these are not the same size. That's why this is rectangular or elongated on one end, okay? And so in this case, how many 1x's does it take to make 4x? It takes 4x four one X's, you see that? So what they did is they butted up against this because this is the same height. They put X, um, X by one here and X by one block there. That's one, so I'm gonna shade that in, okay? And then I have uh, another one right here. That's two, so that would be two X. But if you look at the equation, I need four X, right? So that's one X, two X, Right, let's go over to the next one. Over here, they put it on the bottom. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to make a, a square out of this. In other words, the same length on all sides. And if you'll notice, if I wanted a square out of this, this would have to be x plus one plus one. Well, if I come over here, it should be x plus one plus one. And that's why they did the, the rectangle sideways like this. So, um, so there's your one x there, and then there's your other one x there. So if you look at it, we've got one, two, three, four X's and X squared, but we haven't talked about this portion yet. So what we've done is we've got an almost a square situation here, but we've got this little corner in the bottom down here that, that, um, that needs to be dealt with. So if you'll notice this length right here is one, right? And then this length right here is one. So one times one is one. So every one of these little squares would represent the number one. And so what are they talking about? If you go up here and look at this, you've got X squared, we already understand that. That's X times X. And then we have four X's, which was one X, two X, three X, four X right here. And then this gap should be four if I want this to be a square, but look, it's not. They said that it's two. So we've got some kind of problem going on here. So what we've got to do is called completing the square, all right? So, so it says how many one by one boxes are needed above to make uh, x square plus four x a perfect square? And that's gonna be four one by one boxes, all right? So we're gonna need four of those. Now let's, let's go over here and explain what that means. Oh, and by the way, remember, if we have a perfect square, we can square root. The square root really is, is this would be what I consider the squares like. Uh, like if I had a king by king square, the root of that square would be king because that's the basis of, of, of the square. This, X, this is x plus two. So x plus two would be the square's root, okay? And so let's go over here to the next question. All right, so now that we've seen that other part and we had, that, uh, we had the x squared, 
we had the 1x, 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 1x sideways like that. And then we had this gap. So we fill in the blank here. We had four ones. All right, so we can see that x squared plus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square by factoring it. And what they mean by factoring it is length by width. All right, so that, in other words, it would be, uh, it would be x plus 2 times x plus 2. And um, you can prove that by looking at the, the ends here. The last two terms would be 2 times 2, which is 4. And then the middle two terms would be 2x plus 2x, which should add together to make 4x. Well, that's, that's uh, how that works. So this is a square. You could also rewrite it as x squared plus 2 squared. So now we've completed the square, right? It was a rect. Yeah. What we had was a rectangle. This is the square. But now we have to go back to the original and figure out how to, how to uh, do this step by step. Okay. So let's go look at the steps here. So it says now let's return to solving. So we've got this right here. Um, so we have to subtract two from both sides. So let's go do that. All right, I'm going to rewrite it like it looks, and I'm going to subtract two from both sides. So what you're going to do, you remember how I had that gap a while ago up here? So basically, they want you to write it out, at least get part of the square form, and that's going to be the first two terms here. So you could take that out. That's literally what we're looking at, x squared plus 4x, right? So we're taking this two out, and then we're going to deal with that little section right here. We know this needs, under this finger, needs to be a 4. So we'll get to that. All right, um, now it says, um, well, we need to rewrite this, we're not through here. Okay, so we've got this situation here and I'm gonna leave a gap right here for a reason, for, uh, for future reference, okay? All right, add, add four to both sides so that the left side is a perfect square, all right? So we're going to, um, to add four to both sides, I'm sorry, I need to do that down here. So let's come down here and add four to both sides. So now, if you'll notice, uh, I've got a perfect square going here. And then this is easy enough to do. That's four minus two, which is two. Um, the only problem is at this point, you couldn't use what's called the zero product property because this is not zero, all right? This is a not, e not an easy thing to deal with, all right? So there, let's rewrite this. All right, so now we've got this situation going on here. It says factor the left-hand side. Well, remember we factored it already up here. It was x squared plus x squared because it's a perfect square. So uh, x squared or x plus two times x plus two is the, is the factored form of that. And another way to do that would be x plus two squared equals two. So if you go back to the original, this right here and this right here are equivalent. All right, we worked out the math in the middle. It doesn't look like they would be, but they actually are, okay? All right, so um, now we're gonna solve by taking the square root of both sides. Well, that's easy enough. We've done that a bunch of times already. All right, so now instead of zero, we've got the square root of two over here. So we've got to deal with that. Square root of two, so it's not not a pretty nice little number, okay? So how am I gonna solve for this? I solve for x by subtracting two. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You see that plus two right there? You would have to take it away on both sides in order to make x happen by itself. So that's why I moved it over. It's gonna be negative two plus or minus the square root of two, and this is my answer. And it's not pretty, is it? Okay, so that's what we're talking about by completing the square. Sometimes your numbers don't work out nice and neat. Um, now, um, let's go to the next little set here. It says, what does it mean for an expression like x plus k squared to be a perfect square? All right, so let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna do, uh, okay, so uh, x, we got an x plus x box there. So if you work, if you work this out, it would be if you expanded it out, it would be x squared plus 
two k x was k square, something like that. All right. So in other words, we've got a box here. We've got a box here. So if this is x plus k right there, x plus k for the you see that root. If you remember, I told you it was king times king makes uh, that's a king square. So uh, this would be the root of the square. So it's x plus k. And then this side over here would have to be x plus k. So that means this would be a, uh, this little box right here would be a kx box. This little box would be a kx box. And look at how many I've got. I've got two kx boxes. I've got an x squared. And then what's, what's in the gap down here? It's a k by k. You see that? So we've got k by k, that's k squared. So if you if you worked it all out vis, visibly, um, uh, visually, then it looks like that. So this and that are kind of the same representation. It's just written a little bit different. Now let's look at, um, you remember how this is, this A term is one. So that means our, our graph is going to be uh, a U shape facing upward. Um, same thing here. So to factor this, you need two numbers that multiply to and add to blank, okay? So, um, okay, so you need to factor this, you need two numbers that multiply to, uh, I'm gonna come, I'll tell you what, let's come back to this uh, and focus in, I'm gonna hit this tomorrow and fill these blanks in. I want you to look at this little part right here, uh, draw an arrow at this and circle that because that's super important that you remember this. This is kind of the thing you need to memorize when we're, we're completing the square. All right, so remember how we had earlier, we had x squared plus four x like that. And then we didn't know what that extra gap at the bottom corner was. Well, you could have found it by taking this B term, that B term right there, and then you complete the square by uh, putting it in this format. So you remember how we added four to both sides? Well, look at this. What if I put four here in where B's at and, and work this out? Let's see what happens here. Four divided by two is two, two squared is four. That's why they wanted you to add four to both sides because that's how you complete the square. So in other words, uh, this is what you add to both sides of the equation, okay? So let's go and focus in on that. So you would act, you would come over here and you would add b squared, I'm sorry, b over two squared to both sides of the equation. So like if you had, uh, if you had zero over here, you'd still have to add b over two squared to both sides because what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And that's called completing the square. And you need to lock this in your long-term memory because you're gonna see this again in college algebra. You're gonna see this again in trigonometry. You're gonna see this again in calculus. It's gonna, it's gonna haunt you, okay, if you don't memorize this. So take that middle term and uh, divide it by two and square, square it, okay? Now, uh, let's go and look at 34 minutes in. We have about six minutes left, all right? So it looks to me like we might be able to finish this page and then I'll go back, like I said yes, uh, earlier, and I'll explain that other box tomorrow. I uh, just skipped over that because I didn't, I didn't wanna deal with that right now. All right, so let's look at, you see how we just wrote down uh, uh, the B squared over two squared next to that? So that was like the X plus four X thing there. Now it's x plus bx. We don't know what b is, but no matter what b is, you can still complete the square by putting b over two uh, squared. Now, what number squared gives you b over two squared and added to itself gives you b, All right? Um, um, let's skip that and come down here and focus on this. We'll, we'll do this uh, also tomorrow, all right? And let's fill in the blanks down here. Okay, so move the constant to the right-hand side. 
just like we did now the constant you see the constant there that's this thing right here in other words it's constantly constantly negative three and nothing's going to change it this can change it's a variable this can change it's a variable this can't change because it's a constant and uh and so we're going to move that to the right hand side so the way we do that is we uh, if it's negative three over here, it's gonna be positive three, just like that. That's a kind of a quick way to do it. So if you move something from one side to the other, just change the sign and you got it, okay? All right, so now let's rewrite this. Remember to leave the gap here because we're gonna, we're gonna like that uh, visible box that we had earlier. Um, so this is kind of the situation we have here, x squared plus one x plus one x, and we still have a gap there. 1x plus 1x is 2x, right? So now we're gonna fill in the gap. Now how are we gonna do that? Um, we're gonna use the formula up here to do that. Remember two is b, so you'll put two over two squared. I'm gonna circle that so you can see that, uh, that that's what that goes over there. Okay, and then uh, what was this over here? Three plus, and then we had two over two squared, and I'm gonna circle that again. All right, so we've got uh, x squared plus two x plus, this is one squared, which is one. Oh, so look, over here, it pretty much uh, worked itself out. So we have x and one. So if you have a one by one, what's one times one? That's one, right? So we have a square root of x plus one here, and then we had the, uh, the constant term was one, it, it was negative three and it needed to be one for it to be a perfect square. So that's why we had to move that guy out of the way. All right. So we have three plus uh, one squared, which is four. So I'm going to re rewrite this all. Okay. So now we have that. And uh, now we're going to factor just like we always do. So we're going to factor this. It's very simple. Remember to square. We already have the answer up here. It's X plus one, X plus one. All right x plus one times x plus one that's x squared x plus one squared and then we square root both sides of the equation all right and so we get x plus one equals the okay you know the square root of the square root of four right the square root of four is two so that plus or minus technically here if you put plus or minus here and then you square root four, I mean, you could, you could see a plus or minus look like this. It could, it could change sign, but really is it changing sign much? No, these two things are equivalent. This, but this is the way you would write it if you were to change the sign on it, but, uh, if something happened there, it doesn't matter. You're still adding and subtracting. You're still having, you still have to have to do both. So it didn't really matter at that point. Okay. Um, now we're gonna subtract one from both sides. Remember to move it over and change the sign. So now we've got x equals negative one plus two and x equals negative one minus two. So let's see what that works out to be. So we have x equals one and x equals negative three. And so my final answer, my solution at the bottom here will be negative three, one, okay? If you were to graph that out, I'll pull this back because we're gonna probably have to end it up here at this point. Um, uh, and we'll finish up tomorrow with some more stuff, but this, this was completing the factoring quadratic equations by completing the square. Um, and the key term here to remember is, if it's not a square, then you have to remember B over two squared. That's kind of the, the thing you need to memorize, right? When you hear the words completing the square, you should, you should automatically go to, oh, I cut the middle term in half and then square it, okay? Middle coefficient. All right, so are there any questions before we end it? I'm gonna, it'll probably shut me off here in just a second. Is there any, uh, anything y'all need from me before we, before we quit? Right. Um, if, uh, if there's no questions, I'll go ahead and shut it off and, uh, and upload it to YouTube. But 
make sure you're emailing me uh, if you have any any uh, if you've come up on anything. If you go and actually try to do the other stuff on your own uh, in without me, which I would prefer to be honest, because I want you to try to learn. You're not going to learn this unless you do it by yourself and and work it out and uh, and make mistakes. So. Uh, that's kind of how you learn everything. You make a mistake and then you know not to do it again. And so um, that's that's how I want you guys to do. So uh, just uh, let me know if you have any, if you come up on anything that you're having trouble with and I can try to guide you through it. Uh, just make sure you email me and I'll try to respond as fast as I can. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow.